Lord knows I wouldn't want to lead a company of pierces into battle. But I'd sure as hell want him around when that battle was over. Colonel, what do the records indicate about my surgical skills? If you hadn't been drafted as a doctor, I think you'd have been assigned as a pastry chef. <laughs> In my judgment, no case of mutiny exists. And I'll advise that the charges against Captain Pierce be dropped. Court adjourned. You beat the rap, baby face. I owe it all to clean living and fancy footwork. Congratulations, Pierce. Me too, sir. Well, no hard feelings. I guess it's not your fault Justice got hoodwinked. And you can't be blamed for trying to save your own neck. But I do have a bone to pick with that colonel. Haven't you had enough for one day? Well, that's just it, sir. I won't allow his innocence to be a blot on my record. Do you think we could just sneak away and leave him here? Frank's too sharp for that. He always leaves a trail of breadcrumbs. <laughs> Rust? For you, a terrific deal. At Mako, we deal with dents and dings every day. So call during Mako's Small Dents Big Deal Days. You're watching Channel 5. Two lessons on family values. Daddy and his roommate Frank live together. Americans try to raise their children to understand right and wrong only to be told that every so-called lifestyle alternative is morally equivalent. That is wrong. Mommy says Daddy and Frank are gay. And we stand against the amoral idea that gay and lesbian couples should have the same standing in law as married men and women. Being gay is just one more kind of love. From the political arena to a proposed first grade reader, tonight, the debate over family values goes to school. This is ABC News Nightline, reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. When school begins in the New York City public school system tomorrow, four books will have been added to the curriculum for first graders. They will not necessarily be introduced in class. They are, after all, merely four books among 600, from which teachers may choose. But this will be the first time that anything quite like these books will have been made available to first graders. The New York school system is trying to accommodate a statistical reality with a social objective. At least 10% of the general population in this country is believed to be gay. And therefore, argue the authors of New York City's first grade curriculum, therefore, teachers must be aware of varied family structures, including gay or lesbian parents. And children must be taught to acknowledge the positive aspects of each type of household. As Nightline correspondent Dave Marish now reports, it has become amply clear in this political season that while some would agree with that sentiment, others would not. Americans try to raise their children to understand right and wrong, only to be told that every so-called lifestyle alternative is morally equivalent. That is wrong. When Republicans convened their convention in August, they zeroed in on one favorite target from the Democratic convention the month before, homosexuals. Yet a militant leader of the homosexual rights movement could rise at that same convention and say, Bill Clinton and Al Gore represent the most pro-lesbian and pro-gay ticket in history, and so they do. A marked contrast, the Republicans insisted, from their stance on homosexuality. It is a difference between fighting for what's right and refusing to see what's wrong. If Dan Quayle were writing this script in true Dick and Jane Primer style, his next words might be, see what is wrong. Today, families like gay parents Doug and Michael and their adopted children, seven-year-old Justin and four-year-old Zach, are no longer unique. We are no more different than any other family in terms of our family values. 
Our children get up anywhere from between 5 and 6 o'clock every morning. We're there. We have breakfast. We, we take them off to school. We're, both of us are class parents in our, in our kids' school, classrooms. We love our children. We want the best for them. Uh, and we want the best for our society, for our city. Today, same-sex couples, gay men and lesbian women, head families, raise children, aspire to a version of the American dream, to be treated like Dick and Jane, to be part of America's common experience, even to be part of a first-grade curriculum. Doug and Michael, Justin and Zach's dream is Dolores Ailing's nightmare. I believe that the two men who adopted these children did it as a selfish act to prove that they can be normal rather than real true concern for these children. Dolores is a Brooklyn housewife organizing opposition to a new school curriculum for New York City's public schools. A curriculum which demands that teachers make students aware, quote, of the changing concept of family in today's society. And says, quote, classes should include references to lesbians, gay people in all curricular areas. Teaching a six-year-old that the, her girlfriends can eventually be her spouse. That's, that's demonic to suggest something like that. So uh, basically, that's, uh, that's what they're teaching, that boys can marry boys and girls can marry girls. Casey's Christian beliefs are offended by statements like this from Gloria Goes to Gay Pride, quote, some women love women, some men love men, some women and men love each other. That's why we march in the parade, so everyone can have a choice. It's no longer a tolerance issue here. This is acceptance. This is looking at the gay, at the gay household as something that should be encouraged. This book is one of four homosexually oriented texts included in the 600 volume bibliography New York City teachers are getting tomorrow to supplement their new curriculum. Two others are Heather Has Two Mommies and Daddy's Roommate, about a heterosexual couple who divorce when Dad moves in with an openly affectionate gay male friend. What mother would say to her son when her husband has left him, left her for another man, for a man, say to her son that this is just another form of love. That to me is a totally unnatural reaction. The reaction that a mother would have would be, your daddy's sick, he's got a problem. What worries these parents most is the fear that just learning about homosexuals in school can lead their children to homosexuality. In my gut, when I see these pictures, I see a behavior, not a lifestyle, that's being taught to children as a normal lifestyle. I see them looking at these pictures and saying, this is okay. That's a naive assumption about how complex child development is. If anything, what it may do, it may increase tolerance to different lifestyles in people. I see the uh, Board of Education usurping my parental right and telling my child that what we present here is not only okay and acceptable, but you have to respect it. One of the important things that we think is important about this curriculum is that if you can catch kids early on to, do, to wrestle with the biases, um, as, you know, as in racism and sexism and ageism and all the other isms, um, if children can, 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 can wrestle with those, can, be, can, can the information can, can be given to them at an early age, I think we have a better chance of those kids coming out not hate, hating a particular group, not gay bashing, not beating up the elderly, I mean, a, a number of groups who, who could be targeted because of just ignorance and just hatred. I'm Dave Maris for Nightline in New York. When we come back, two views on teaching about gay lifestyles in the school. We'll be joined by former Education Secretary William Bennett and by a former teacher who is now the Manhattan Borough President. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by All States. There's something pure about a real sports coupe. It's one part power, one part control, and one stunningly simple piece of sculpture. And at a time when most sports coupes have sold their soul for a few gadgets, isn't it time for a car like this? The all-new 24-valve Ford Probe GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's like a poltergeist. It's incredible. It was the noise of that wind. 
seems like a bomb went off. I just don't know where we're going to begin. When people buy insurance, it's not a tangible item. They can't turn around and take it and put it on a table and admire it. It feels good to have a friend and have a company like Allstate behind you. I don't have a roof and I'm smiling. We're going to get the place fixed up. We're going to have a home again. Now you're going to see exactly how good your insurance company is. Gifted Hands, the gallery on the park, downtown Ames. The 92 Vote, real people talking about real issues that affect your life. World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, the network you should elect to watch. Manhattan Borough President Ruth Messenger was an early supporter of the so-called Children of the Rainbow curriculum. It includes, among its suggested texts for grade schoolers, those books on gay life that we just showed you. Ms. Messenger joins us now from our New York studios. William Bennett was Secretary of Education during the Reagan administration. He is now a senior fellow at both the Hudson Institute and the Heritage Foundation. He joins us in our Washington studios. Ms. Messenger, let me begin with what may seem like a peripheral question. Indeed, it probably is. Uh, the discussion in any form right. of issues of lesbianism or, or gay lifestyle, is that appropriate for a six-year-old or even a seven-year-old? What we're trying to do here, Ted, is to be sure that every child in every first grade feels that he or she is one of the people being talked about. And so we simply ask teachers to recognize all of the different kinds of family, to recognize that there are children in single parent families, that there are extended families, that there are children in lesbian and gay families, that there are foster children. The, the curriculum guide for the teacher clearly covers the range and just says, talk about all the different kinds of families there are so that every child will feel included and so that all children will learn about difference and understand the importance of tolerance. You've read those four booklets. I, mean, I they're, have. They're, 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 they're not very heavy going, but they seem to do more than simply suggest uh, toleration. They seem to suggest sort of a moral equivalent. No, I don't think they do that. They describe some real families. They describe how the children in those families come to understand themselves. I think that they help children who are in those families or children who know children in those families to understand that that is part of America in the 90s and that those are real families. As far as we've gone, Mr. Bennett, any objection? Yeah, I think, uh, well, I, I think your question is not peripheral. I think in, uh, it's one of the central questions. I see no sound pedagogical reason uh, to give five or six or seven-year-old children uh, this kind of instruction. I see no uh, sensible educational purpose. I, I am, I will admit, uh, a math, science, uh, English person uh, myself, but the one part of the uh, guide to the teachers that I did read from New York says, if you do not, if you do not bring up these issues of pro-gay or gay and lesbian parents, the issues will not come up. So these are not things on the minds of students. These are oh, not matters no. before the, uh, uh, the attention and imagination of most six and seven year olds. This is being done in order to bring their attention to it. It, it, it certainly, it certainly think... wouldn't be, uh, Mr. Bennett, if I may just follow up on this, it, it certainly wouldn't be brought up in the sense that we're discussing it here tonight. But I can easily imagine uh, that a little boy who goes home with his friend and who finds not the traditional mother, father, or perhaps single mother, but instead finds two women uh, clearly uh, affectionate toward each, uh, each other in a physical way, might come home and say, uh, boy, that was, that was kind of strange over there. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. That's different. And well, there's one person that that child may t might talk to about that, and I think in most cases that would be the child's parent, uh, which, is, which is appropriate. I, again, I see no sound pedagogical reason to introduce to a class of first graders, six-year-old children, these stories about I have two mommies or I have two daddies. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be subtle uh, about this, Ted. I think what we're doing here, what somebody's trying to do, is to proselytize, is to say Oh, Ted, exactly, I think that's ridiculous. That's not at all what the I, guide says. May I just finish my thought? Sure. 
uh, which is to say, look, uh, we want these kids to be told early on uh, that there are these alternative lifestyles, they are morally equivalent, there is nothing special about the American family, about the male and female and heterosexual uh, uh, family uh, in marriage, uh, and this is part of the program. Ted, I think that you have to really read the curriculum guide. First of all, it doesn't talk about sharing each of these 600 books. It says to the teacher, when you talk to your kids about family, recognize that the child whose family has gone through a divorce or death of a parent wants to feel included. Understand that children today in America in the 1990s come from a lot of different kinds of families and mention all of them so that children will understand these differences. I'll give you an example. There's a book in the curriculum called The Not-So-Wicked Stepmother. Now that's also a very simple book for six-year-olds. But what is it designed to get at? It's designed to get at this huge number of children who have step-parents, who would mostly know about step-parents or about their friends' step-parents from Cinderella. Let me we do don't want them to feel that way. Let me, let, me, let me do something, Ms. Messenger, that no good lawyer in court would do, but I'm, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not in court, sure. and that is ask a question uh, and have no idea what the answer is. Is there any book in that, in that 600 book curriculum that talks about uh, daddies in the slammer? Uh, I mean, after all, there, there must be many tens of thousands of children uh, whose parents are in jail. I don't know, but I do know, for example, I was looking through the titles in the curriculum, there's one called My Daddy Doesn't Go to Work. Now, the Republican Party, which does not want to admit to, to a variety of different family structures, also has a lot of trouble acknowledging unemployment. Always but smart. it doesn't help a kid to be told everybody's daddy gets up and goes to work every day if that's not the reality. You want to be able to acknowledge difference. Children, children of divorce in, in my time of growing up felt as if they had a deep, dark secret that they couldn't talk about because well, it wasn't the way families were. And there are a lot of people that, who morally object to divorce, but they do acknowledge that it happens in the house next door, in their own family, sometimes in their own household. Mr. Bennett, I've been watching the physical fidget factor, and yeah. I know you want to get back into this thing. Uh, let us just take a sure. quick break, and uh, I'll come right back to you. We'll continue our discussion in a moment. which side of the abortion issue you're on, we've got news for you. It may already be decided why Roe versus Wade is moved. If it's important to you, you'll find it in time. To those of you who have a certain image of minivans, Nissan introduces the Quest. It has a V6 engine, so it's more powerful, and front-wheel drive. So it's more nimble and agile than you'd expect a minivan to be. After all, just because you have kids doesn't mean you have to drive a bus. A new seven-passenger Nissan Quest. It's time to expect more from a minivan. Discover Boone's Treasures at Pupperbilly Days 92, September 10th through 13th. Come celebrate Boone's Railroad Heritage. Don't miss the exciting Pupperbilly Parade, Saturday the 12th at 10 a.m. Plus, enjoy hand car races, an antique car show, model railroad display, art festival, a ride on the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad, and much more. Join the fun of live entertainment by Cheyenne, Hits, John Morgan Big Band, and Beth Hunter and the Jim Dandies as they discover Boone's treasures at Pufferbilly Days 92. Four days of family fun, September 10th through 13th. It's us and them. Don't riot and disaster victims lose enough? Now they're losing their homes to con men. Primetime Undercover catches them Thursday. And we are back with former Education Secretary William Bennett and Manhattan Borough President Ruth Messenger. Uh, Mr. Bennett, you wanted to get back into this. Well, uh, yeah, let, let's speak very particularly. I grew up in New York City. I went to New York City schools. I am the child, unfortunately, of divorce, uh, but we didn't have to have a course on it. Uh, I mean, uh, my friends met my, uh, my stepmother, who was not a wicked stepmother, and that's how they, they found out that uh, all stepmothers are not like wicked stepmothers. 
just because there is a problem in American society or a new concern in American society does not mean we have to re-gear, redeploy the entire American curriculum to address it. This is quite apart, Ted, from any question about equivalency between homosexual and heterosexual. This is the general problem with our schools. Every time somebody pops up with a problem, we're going to fix it by changing the curriculum. Math, English, history, science, and geography, please. We are last or close to last in the industrialized world in these basic disciplines, and we are horsing around now in New York City uh, talking about various sex roles for six-year-olds. Well, this, well, really, this is really nonsense, and, and sometime in the future, people in New York are going to realize what nonsense this is. Ted, let, let me be clear. I share Bill's concern about the quality of education in this country. I wish we had devoted a great deal more resources to the schools so that we could make a difference for all children in all of those subject areas. Four hundred and sixteen billion dollars a year. Fine, but this is not, billion. but this is not, Bill, let's get to your point. This is not a question of re-gearing curriculum. What we're saying is, and as a teacher, former teacher, and as the parent of three children who went through the New York City public school system, I know that first grade is precisely the time when kids want to get a sense of who they are and who are the people around them. Where do I fit in? How am I li like my friend? How am I different? Well, all we're asking is that on all of the multicultural issues, from family structure to latchkey children to different racial and national backgrounds, that teachers talk about family in as broad me, a possible way. Ask, and me, the books are a backup for question. teachers. Let yes. me ask this question. Sure. You have a racial incident in the school. Right. You have a racial incident in Howard Beach. You bring students in. You talk to them about race. You talk to them about tolerance. Where is the problem? Where is this large problem among six-year-old children in New York City who are being harassed or kidded or beaten up because their parents are homosexual? What do you mean? This, where is the problem? There is not such a problem, Oh, I Ruth. don't be let, ridiculous. Let me finish. There is not such a problem. There is no widespread persecution of six- or seven-year-old children because of the sexual orientation of their parents. Let me interrupt you. Oh, I think, you're, let me, I think let me, you're wrong, Bill. Let me interrupt you both just for one moment because I think that's sort of peripheral to the argument. Would you feel any differently about it, uh, Mr. Bennett, if we moved it up from first grade to third grade or third grade to fifth grade? Well, I, I, I'd, feel, uh, I'd feel a little better in terms of the tenderness of age of the children. No, what about the, what about the appropriateness, however, I, of again, having some I, books in the curriculum then that, that foster understanding of gay lifestyle? Again, Ted, a curriculum is a choice of priorities. And given uh, the educational standing of this country, what our kids don't know, the degree of problems we have in certain areas and in others, I do not see an, endem uh, an epidemic of persecution of children, of homosexual parents, of eight-year-olds any more than six-year-olds. I, I don't think that this that's what is, we're talking about. This is made up. This is an attempt to proselytize. No, no, because, Bill, you're putting words in my mouth. First of all, it is clearly not an attempt to proselytize. The curriculum guide for teachers says this is one of your opportunities to give every child in your classroom a healthy sense of his or her identity. And all of us needed what that at various also, points. I remember a book also that... says is, if you do not bring up these issues, they will not arise. Which well, means these issues are not on the minds of these well, but children. Let, but let's think they about where they do arise. They are through the teachers to be on their minds. Let's think That's about... not what school is for. Bill, let's think about where they do arise. In five major cities in this country in the last year, the percentage of violent crimes against people who were gay or lesbian or perceived to be gay or lesbian increased 31%. The six-year-olds, the seven-year-olds, the nine-year-olds that I know watch the television, watch television news, they watch violence in the comics, but they also watch who gets harassed, who gets assaulted, right. and it raises questions. I'll tell you how We're you respond asking, to that. You yes. teach equal respect for the law, you teach tolerance, and you teach, and you teach that you do not harass people, you do not make fun of people, and you do not bash people. Well, you there do not, we're in agreement. There, there's a very direct way to do this without talking to six-year-olds about various kinds of life arrangements which have never well, occurred to six years. Let me just, let me just ask you both on... Get. Uh, what uh, about the standard first grade book? In the standard first grade book, we were for many years in this city having every first grader read about that little house with the licket, little picket fence and the dog and the cat and the mommy and the daddy and the mommy who stayed home. That's Boy, did one. it make a difference to me when I was a young kid. A book came out sometime in the early 1950s called Mommies at Work. And that was the first time that I had ever seen in a, in a book that was introduced in a classroom where they said it was okay that maybe. other mommies went to work. And maybe. that made me feel a different sense of myself than I would have otherwise. Let me just, let me was, just jump in here. Let me just divorced. jump in here for, <laughs> let me jump in for a quick moment because we've only got a couple of minutes left. And, and I want to broaden it out 
uh, at least to find out, are we discussing the kind of thing, Bill Bennett, uh, that certain Republicans at the Republican convention were discussing when they used the term family values? Is there a difference here in family values? Well, I think it's related, Ted. I think it's, uh, it's connected to this issue. When I talked about family values, and different um, Republicans talked about it in different ways, as, I, as you noticed, I did say one of the things that's crucial to family values is giving families more opportunity to choose the schools their children attend. And I think this discussion we're having tonight puts that issue front and center. If you don't want your children reading these kinds of stories and reading these kinds of books, by God, you shouldn't have to have your children reading them. And that's what parental choice is about. Again, Ted, Bill, this is a backup curriculum. If parents indeed, as some are, are going through every one of these 600 titles, you know what? They will find books about uh, other nationalities that they object to. They will find, as I said before, books about step family arrangements that they object to. They'll be uncomfortable because the curriculum well, speaks of adoption, and they may have an adopted child, and they want only to talk about it their own way. Assuming education, that Bill, assuming education that is about providing information to promote tolerance. It's not about keeping certain pieces of about, information from me, different children. How about some tolerance from my point of view? Assuming that most of your constituents in New York are bigoted, you know, toward, toward minorities, toward gays, toward step-parents, I think is a big mistake. And when you address them in this way and suggest that their children need this kind of brainwashing, I don't think uh, Bill, you're going to win their favor. I think you're Bill, insulting you're, you're, you're putting Ms. Messenger, words, Mr. Bennett, I'm, I'm afraid... It's I'm, not brainwashing. It's straightforward <laughs> teaching that there are a lot of different people in this world in a lot of different families from a lot of different backgrounds. The sooner we do that, you the are, more real we're being and the more this, we are building are a sense both, of tolerance. You most are kids both, know that. You are both they eloquent. Math. You are both persistent. And we are out of time. And I'm afraid that's going to have to take precedence here. Thank you both very Thank much you. indeed. Mr. Bennett, Ms. Messenger, I'll be back in a moment. Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel for the finish of a lifetime. Dear I'm Thompsons, sorry, when the store ran out of Thompson's we water seal, we finished our deck with another brand. So what a mistake. The Thompson side beat it up, the other really side, bad. nothing. Even the clerk agreed, nothing works like Thompson's. Thanks. Sincerely, Becky Jones, Charlotte, North Carolina. It begins at dawn. They come for you, and they want what you have. It's your bed. You're sort of perfect sleeper, but it's the most comfortable spot in the house. It's why people are saying, I want my Serta. Here's the actual winning moment of the newest publisher's Clearing House Big and Air. Sue King just won a million dollar super prize. Are the you kidding me? Your winning moment can be next if you enter our new sweepstakes fast. This is totally unreal. Th this just can't be happening. Do you love to exercise? I'm at one of the finest health spas and resorts going. I could enjoy a complete workout. Sauna, massage, special Nautica spa diet. It's all right here. But what I really love about this health spa is that it goes everywhere I go. Take a three, four, or seven day fun ship vacation on Carnival, the most popular cruise line in the world. At Ford Motor Company, we don't just build quality cars and Ford trucks. Customer Assistance Center, how may I help We build you? relationships. On my entry. Our Customer Assistance Department assists over 4,000 people a day on everything from warranties to how to program a keyless entry system. It's part of a whole One, philosophy two. at Ford that's rapidly that's changing the ownership experience. Well, it's important to us that you're happy with your car. Thanks for calling Ford. Ford Motor Company. Quality is job one. It's working. It's working. On the next Good Morning America, a post-hurricane checkup of Florida's tourism industry. Also, Gloria Stefan, the story of her own relief efforts on Good Morning America. Whatever happens overnight, we'll be there to cover it. Turn to World News Now, later tonight on this ABC station. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been Nightline. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.
Wednesday. I've got 500 watts running through this bad boy. Is it safe for us to be sitting here? Prepare yourself for a lovely Sunday afternoon at the Metropolitan Opera. Oh, that's wonderful, Cam. Turn it down. Stop. Home Improvement. Now on Wednesday, followed by Roseanne on a special night. Thunder showers developing by sunrise with a low in the 50s. Oh, 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 oh.